Hello, congregation. Welcome once again to another bone snapping edition of the Boner. Grab your Bible, open up an application on your phone, open up a web browser, however you follow along in Holy Scripture, because we here at the Boneyard believe sola scriptura. Now you may be saying, Kevin, are you speaking in tongues? Are you talking Latin? Is that some kind of hip hop speak? No, no, no. If you said Latin, you know where it means. It's Latin and it means the scriptures and the scriptures alone. We don't believe the watchtower. The Book of Mormon, someone's personal revelation or even a dream trumps holy scripture that the Christian is under authority of God's holy word. So open your Bible, open up to Galatians. If you know you've been following along with us in our series of Galatians, you know we're knee deep in good rich theology. So open up to Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. We're in the middle of the, the epistle that, the, that Paul wrote to the churches of Galatia. He's writing to these churches by hand and he's writing to them with them with an affection because he loves these people dealing with issues that they deal with in their congregation. They're, they're dealing with ceremonies. They're dealing with following the rules to, to earn their way into heaven. If you remember in our last episode when the law goes bad and whenever we use ceremonies to get to heaven that we're shaking our fists at God and saying, God, you say you saved me, but I'm going to help you along. You say you saved me, and I, I believe in Christ alone, but I, I, ha, I, have to, I have to tithe, and I have to have perfect church attendance, and I have to be nice, and I have to never cuss, and I, I should never drink, and I need to follow these rules to make sure I get to heaven. See, we have this crazy idea that we believe that we can be good enough to get to heaven when we need to learn that it's Christ alone, through faith alone, God alone gets the Lord, the scriptures alone. These are the, the foundations that save us. And Paul continues this in Galatians chapter 5. Open your Bible, look at verse 11. As Paul has been speaking to the churches who he knows them by their face, they know them intimately, but these false teachers, they've crept up within the congregation. They're, they're turning the hearts of the sheep against their, their former pastor and their church planner. They're, they're turning their hearts against him saying that Paul is he's teaching you wrong and differently than what you know. He's going to other churches and he's telling them to follow ceremonies and feast days and blood moons and to blow your shofars and wear your taliyits and your yarmulkes. And th that's how you get to heaven by being a good Jew, not a good Christian. Now, Paul, he sends a rebuttal that sends shockwaves through this congregation. And we still feel the shockwaves today in our churches and in our culture. There's still some churches that give advice to members and they tell you to live moral good lives. To live a life that's uh, pleasing to man and God. That, 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 that God will be in heaven and he'll see how good you are and how nice you are. He'll see your Prius in the driveway. He'll know that you recycle and he'll be pleased with you. He knows that you deal with fair trade companies and he knows that you're vegan. And God will say, surely that person needs to go to heaven. Well, the good news is that Jesus loves all the bad people and we all qualify because we're all wicked and we all deserve hell. But we don't get to go to heaven because of our ceremonies and the things we do. Yes, we can take we can take communion every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We can eat bread and drink wine all, all day, all our lives, and it still would not qualify us to get to heaven. We see here Paul speaking in Galatians chapter 5, verse 11. He's speaking to the congregation, and he says, But if I, brothers, am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. Paul was talking to the church, and he's talking about the, the, those liars, the false teachers who are in the congregation who are saying that even Paul teaches circumcision. Even Paul says that if you revert back to the roots, if you revert back to your Pharisees, your Phariseeism, if you re revert back to your religion, that's what saves you. Paul says, but if I, brothers, preach circumcision, if I preach ceremony, if I preach that you, you do these good things and God is required to let you into heaven, if you do these things in the flesh and you, you donate to the food bank and if, you're, if you hand out gospel tracts and if you go door to door knocking on door and witnessing, you'll get to heaven. Paul was saying, if I preach this way, why am I being persecuted still? Wouldn't it make sense that these false teachers within the congregation, they would be pleased with me. 
They would like what I'm saying. The, uh, the offense would be taken away. Uh, the, this church, the, the, the leaders in your congregation, they wouldn't hate me and despise me. Uh, maybe Paul's gospel is different than what they're preaching. Paul was saying here, if I preach circumcision, why am I being persecuted? Why are those in the congregation turning their hearts, turning your hearts against me? Why are they saying lies about me? They should be applauding me, cheering me on, saying, yeah, Paul's right. Yeah, let's, uh, let's agree with Paul. And Paul is, he's teaching biblical sound doctrine. But instead, they're turning the hearts of the people against Paul, saying he's changed his mind. He's changed his gospel. He's, he's preaching circumcision. And that's what we're preaching. So you can believe us. Maybe they're taking Acts chapter 15 verse 1 out of context. Maybe Acts chapter 16 out of context. Well, Paul meets Timothy. And he takes Timothy because he's a Greek and he's, he's, he's half Greek and he's half Jewish. And he takes, he takes, he takes Timothy and he, he goes and he circumcises him. But why does he do this? Well, he does it because Paul also said, I become all things to all men. And he knows, that, he knows that the religious people that Paul and Timothy were going to preach to were so religious that they made their, their prerequisites, their, their preferences, their prerequisites. That there has to be this certain way that they would never listen to Timothy if he were to plant a church in a Jewish region. Because Timothy, he was Greek and he wasn't, he wasn't circumcised and he, he didn't have ceremonies and he, he, didn't, he didn't adhere to their laws and their statutes. Now, Paul took Timothy to appease those Jews so Timothy can preach the gospel to those people. Now, there are those who, are, who call themselves Christians, and they say we're Christians, but that's such a broad spectrum. Some of us, we say we're Christians, but we don't uh, adhere to what the Scriptures say, and we, we, only, we only conjure up rules and ideas and regulations that make us feel better about ourselves. And Paul is he's echoing to our ears now, telling us and reminding us, if I preach circumcision, that's not, what we, that's not the prerequisite to get to heaven. The, the prerequisite to get to heaven is not uh, being a Baptist. The prerequisite to get to heaven is not being Church of God or Disciples in Christ. It, it's, it's not even being a, a Mormon. It's not a, a being a Catholic. It's not being Hindu. Those are not the prerequisites to get to heaven. The prerequisite to get to heaven is being a sinner, and we all qualify. But the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Not through ceremonies and things we do to believe that, or, that will merit us a place at the foot of Jesus on judgment day, Paul says, if I preach circumcision, why am I being persecuted? In what case the offense of the cross has been removed? See, the, the problem with Christianity, the problem with preaching the cross, the Jew, he, he seeks a sign. He wants to know there's a, he wants the, the, the sky to roll back and the, and the heaven to blink and, and say, this is the sign. That's the problem with the Jew. The religious, they seek a sign, but the Greek... The Greek, want, they, they want knowledge. They want to have understanding. They want to understand, and to them, the cross is, is foolishness. They laugh at it. So Paul says the cross has been removed. The problem with Christianity is the very center of Christianity. No, it's not a place like Mecca. It's not a, an ideology, or it's not, it's not like socialism, or it's not, a, it's not a like moralism. It, it, the, the problem with Christianity all focuses on one thing. And that one thing is one person, and that person is Jesus Christ. The problem is Jesus because he's exclusive. Jesus walked around with an olive skin and curly hair, a Jewish young man with calloused hands working a, a, a blue-collar job, telling people that he is the only way to heaven, that there's all kinds of roads that lead to hell, but there's only one way to heaven, and that's through him. Jesus spoke to the religious and said, all your religious ceremonies and the things that you do that make you think you're good enough to get to heaven, they're for no good. The only way to get to heaven is through me. Jesus speaking at all the Jewish festivals as the high priest would rise up and do rituals and pour out the water on the altar. Jesus would stand up and say, I am the living water. At the, at the, the feast of lights, Jesus would stand up and say, I am the, the light, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus spoke up and proclaimed that he is the only way to get to heaven. See all these other religions, they teach that Allah, that there's other ways to give them. The Hinduism has 550 hundred million gods to get to heaven. All these other religions say like the blind men in the room with an elephant. 
Say there's 50 blind men in the room with an elephant. One of them has the foot and he feels the foot and says, I don't know, maybe it's a tree. Then there's another blind man on the other side who feels the ear of the elephant and says, I, I don't know, it feels like a giant leaf on a tree. And there's another blind man who has the trunk and he holds the trunk and he's blind. And he says, well, it, it feels like a snake, but all the blind men uh, finally agree that it's, a, it's a, an elephant. But they all think it's all an elephant. They, 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 we're, all the world religions say uh, there's many ways to heaven. They all believe they're all holding on to the elephant. Well, Jesus says, I'm the only elephant. I'm the only way. I'm the only way to get to heaven. All the other religions say you can, you can believe what you, what you like. You can believe what you believe in moralism and relativism. That truth is relative. You believe whatever you want. And it's good for you as long as it doesn't offend me. Don't push your opinions on me. And we believe that, that two, two plus two equals seven and that uh, homosexuality is okay and incest is fine and everything's okay and moral and you're okay and I'm okay <laughs> and we all believe everything's okay because we don't want to judge anyone when Jesus says I am the great judge and you're condemned already already without me you have no hope you can't make yourself good enough to get to heaven to inherit eternal life the main problem with Christianity is Jesus himself which is God which is the problem with Christianity See, if we can have heaven without Jesus, oh, people would jump at the opportunity. We could go to heaven and not have to face God on judgment. They have to see him face to face and give an account for our lives. We could go to heaven and not have to give an account for the lies we told or the envy that we carried in our life and the pride or have the, the motivations of our hearts weighed against our actions or seeing the, 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 the likes of Dave's the way we've served God or we can, we can have heaven, have eternity and happiness, peace and joy without Jesus See, the Christianity I'm preaching is about Jesus. See, whenever I preach the gospel, I'm telling about Jesus. And those who hear the gospel have an affection for Jesus. And they'll happily give up their wealth and their health for Jesus. That the, the greatest good is not their wealth and their health and their prosperity. And they'll happily toss it to the side if it makes them more like Christ. So when I preach the gospel, I'm not telling you to come to Jesus and you'll have a bigger house. I'm not telling you to come and tithe and God is obligated to give you more. I'm not telling you to, to come and be faithful to the church and God will look down upon heaven and bless you. Sometimes it doesn't go that way. Sometimes hardships and troubles and pain comes your way and you wonder, well, you wonder if God even sees and then you come discombobulated and you wonder if God even sees and if he's real and if that preacher lied to you. Well, this preacher at the boneyard is telling you the truth that you can be faithful to Jesus and sometimes he'll take prosperity from you and he, he will cause your affections to not be for prosperity but more for him. That you'll fall in love with Jesus and not wealth and health and prosperity. You will fall in love with Jesus even if he takes things from you. He will subtract from your life to make you more into the image of Christ. God will take things and send persecutions your way and rub down the plasticness of pride in your life until it's gone until that old rugged cross can be seen. Sometimes prosperity is the worst thing that can happen to some of us because we'll believe that we can get, we can get to heaven. We can live our lives without Jesus as long as we have a big guest house, as long as we have a nice pool in, in the backyard and our children are healthy. As long as uh, we have a good job, we'll keep serving God. As long as we live in a nice neighborhood, a nice upscale, as long as we're riding the bubble on Wall Street, as long as things are going good, we'll serve God. Oh, but when storms come, oh, when sickness attacks our body, whenever cancer is shown up on the, on the test or, or we are given the pink slip or, or things befall us and we go through trials, tribulation, war, famine, or sore, we turn our faces towards God and we curse Him, shake our fists, and walk away because some preacher told us, oh, just serve Jesus, your life will be better. You know, they blink a lot and they hold up their Bible and say, this is my Bible, and they have a squeak voice very feminine but that is not the point it's not the problem of how they sound if they blink a lot or if they smile a lot the problem is what they're saying they're selling lies they're peddling lies saying every day is a Friday become a Christian it's cool become a Christian it's fun become a Christian your golf swing will be better Paul was telling us the offense of the cross has been removed the offense you're saying the offense the thing that makes us say I don't want that I don't want that. 
If you're watching the Boneyard, you're watching this channel or this station, and you're watching and you're saying, I'm not saying come to Jesus and life will be better. I'm actually saying come to Jesus and things might get harder on you. Come to Jesus and things may not always work out good, but you'll get Christ. You'll get Jesus in the long run. Jesus is better than prosperity. Jesus is better than the world applauding you. Jesus is better than being well known and having a good reputation because it's not always popular to be in love with Jesus. Jesus is better than being healthy. Jesus is better than being well known or respected. Jesus is better. And this is what Paul was telling us, the offense of the cross. Not people are signing up for this kind of Christianity. No, they want the Christianity where you get your BMW and you speak to your wallet and say, wallet, your big fat wallet, be filled with money. I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm talking about speaking to heaven's throne room and saying, Jesus, I'm dirty. I'm stained, and I'm not coming to you to get anything. I'm coming because I, I've offended a holy and righteous God. I come to you because I'm stained and dirty, and I, I can't wash myself clean with any ceremonies. I can't earn my way to heaven with merit. I come to you, Jesus, because I hear you save people. I hear you help dirty people. I come to you, Jesus, because I don't want wealth and prosperity. I can get those things. I'll get those things with no problem. And if I lose those things, I won't shake my fist at you. But Jesus, I come to you because I had an abortion. I come to you, Jesus, because I've had track marks up my arm. I've been addicted. I pop pills every day just to make it. Jesus, I come to you because I deserve hell. I've been envious. I've been angry. I've been lustful. I, I've lived an alternative lifestyle against the scriptures that you say is an abomination to you. Jesus, I come to you because you save dirty, wretched, rotten people. And Jesus, I, I deserve hell. Jesus, I'm dirty. All the 500 and 500, 500 million Hindu gods, they can't save me. Buddha, Buddha can't save me, Jesus. Muhammad, He can't save me. Jesus, I come to you not to get anything. I come to you broken, asking you to blot out my transgressions, to wash me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I come to you, Jesus, because I'm lost and I'm ruined. And things may be going good for me now. Maybe I'm sitting good in a a nice penthouse, but judgment day is coming. It doesn't matter the, the square footage of my home on judgment day. It doesn't matter what kind of nice car I drive on Judgment Day. It doesn't matter if I wear Armani suits and ties on on Judgment Day. It doesn't matter if I wear Prada. It doesn't matter on Judgment Day as appointed for man wants to die, Hebrews 9, 27 and 26. I'll stand before God and I'll give an account for my life. If I lived a holy and righteous life and pursued Christ and not wealth, health, if I pursued glory, my own glory and not his glory, if, I, if I've been a, a blatant sinner, an atheist, or, or just been an agnostic, if I ignored God my entire life and lived my life the way I believe I should live, if I've been a rebel to God and shook my fist at him, and if I could see God face to face, oh, I would kill him. I will stand before God on judgment day whether I believe him or not. I will give an account for my life and the books shall be opened and I'll stand before God and he will judge me by his perfect standard, his holiness and righteousness. And if I fail, I will spend eternity in hell. But for those who come broken, who come with blood-stained hands, who come with no merit, who are spiritually bankrupt, who come and they are religious, who believe that they'll get to heaven because they're good people, who come because they, they, they come because they're, 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 they're broken at the knees and they're, they're crawling to the cross and they know they deserve hell and they know that God's holiness is required to judge their sin, their sin of covetousness and envy and pride, their sin of lying, lying from the government, lying to their spouse, lying to their friends, lying in general, little white lies, big black lies, lying stealing, taking things that don't belong to them, coveting and lusting and have sexual thoughts for someone of the same sex or even the opposite sex, murderous ideas in their hearts and minds, 
hating someone and not giving forgiveness, dishonoring their mother and father, disrespecting them, looking down upon them in their old age or even when they're younger, looking at someone dis disdain, looking at your parents and say they're fools. What do they know? Not honoring God's Sabbath day. Not honoring Him and worshiping Him in our lifestyles. Taking God's name in vain. Speaking like He is nothing more than a dirty cuss word. Living for other things in our lives. Worshiping things like cars and houses, four-wheelers, beach houses, vacation, vanity. Living for those things other than God. And not loving God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, with all our being, standing before God on Judgment Day. How will you negotiate with God when you pull out everything in your pockets? Give Him all the money that you have, your 401k. Will you negotiate God? Will you try to bribe God? If God is holy, if God is good and righteous, He can't be bought off. Well, maybe God will turn a blind eye to my sins and he won't say anything and he'll let me in the back door of heaven. Maybe he'll just wink at me and, and, and slide me into the side and say, okay, I'll, I'll grade on a curve and it doesn't work that way. Like a dry leaf to a flame. That flame will always consume the dry leaf. God is holy, holy, holy. And people like me, or not, not, not. What will you do on Judgment Day? You've broken His commandments. You've broken His laws and His statutes, His perfect requirement to get to heaven. What will you do on Judgment Day? That's what Paul says here, the offense of the cross. See, either right now you're listening to what I'm saying and you're offended. What do you mean saying I'm a sinner? I live my lifestyle the way I believe I should. Uh, society dictates what is right and what's wrong, not God and not your archaic book. What do you mean to say I'm a liar and a thief? I live by my own moral standards. I sit in the place of God. That's an offense to you. Jesus is the only way to heaven. How narrow-minded are you? How can Jesus be God? How can Jesus, a carpenter that lived 2,000 years ago, be the only way to heaven? You're offended. But there are those who are watching, who hears the cries from this boneyard preacher. You hear me and you know you will stand before God on judgment day. The old Puritans used to call this the, 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 same, the same sun that melts the snow and ice also hardens the clay. When we hear the gospel, we, we will be changed in some way or the other. Some of us are hardened even more when we hear the gospel. We are hardened and say, I reject that even more when we hear the gospel. And some of us are broken when we hear the gospel. This is what Paul talks about, the offense of the gospel. If you are broken by hearing the gospel and you know you need a Savior, that religion can't save you, you know that you can't earn your way to heaven, and the scripture rings true. The only way to get to heaven is through Christ and Christ alone. Kevin, what does that mean? The Bible tells us in Romans, the wages, the cost, the price of sin is death. That means there's a price to be paid for our envy and our anger and our bitterness. There's a, there's a price to be paid for our lust of our hearts, our sleeping around, our jealousy and our pride. There's a price to be paid for that unforgiveness that you harbor in your heart. There's a price to be paid for that idol worship, the thing that you live for greater, that you lift up in your life that's greater than God. There's a price to be paid for, and that is death. But you're saying, Kevin, I don't want to die. Any sensible person wouldn't want to die when the Bible tells us that Jesus, God's only Son, who was perfect and holy in every way, came to earth in the form of flesh and blood, in the image of a baby, and lived a perfect and holy life, grew up before God. He grew in stature before man and power before God. He walked this earth and gathered 12 friends. And he spoke and he told the religious people that your ceremonies and the things that you do will not get you into heaven, that the only way to get to heaven is through me. 
And God took all the sins that you and I ever done and placed them on Jesus. Because the price, the cost, the wages of sin is death. But Jesus was the good guy. He never lied. He never lusted. He never had idols. He loved God with all his heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And God placed all the sins upon Jesus, the perfect Son of God, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the sacrifice, the appeasement, the one who takes away the wrath. It was, was all placed on Jesus, and Jesus died in my place. Someone who's not righteous, someone who's rebellious, someone who's religious, Jesus died in my place. And for three days, this Jesus, this young carpenter, laid in a tomb, dead. His friends ran away and they cried and they hid because the other religious leaders were looking to kill them too. But on the third day, some of his friends were coming to his grave and they noticed the the doorway to the tomb. The grave was open and they, they found out that Jesus was alive and he even appeared to them, spoke to them, sat down and ate with them and he said, I'm alive, now go. Go tell others I'm alive. Oh, I took your sin upon myself. Buddha didn't die for you. Muhammad wants you to die for him. Allah Allah wants you to to kill people so you inherit eternal life. The The Hindu gods want you to sacrifice, leave food until it rots in their temples to the rat gods and the Krista and Karma. Jesus took the wrath that was intended for me. Now that's why the boneyard's here and that's why it's offensive. The Buddha would look and say, that doesn't make sense. Allah and Muhammad would look and say, that doesn't make sense. But Jesus died for all the bad people, all the dirty people. So if you are come and you're broken, if you've not been defended, offended by the cross, come to Jesus, come to the cross, lay down your sins and trust in Him. Trust in Him as your only way to get to heaven, not your good works and your religion. You rebel, you throw down your swords and trust in Jesus. Repent, repent of your sins and trust in Jesus. He is the only way to get to heaven.